the dire wolf. Take a look at his jaw to understand what kind of person he is. He is a canid person. Long jaw. Like a blade saw. Like something that can get in and do a long bite. A rip. Or a shake. And these are very thick, these cornered processes. They're very textured. Very much at the upper echelon of what dog canid jaws are capable of. Canis lupus. This thing kills deer for breakfast. He was very striking. His face was black, like an Anatolian shepherd. But then he had the characteristic stripe across the back and trapezius muscles and shoulders. Can you imagine this thing's how? You can assume that he was social. That he was part of a pack, part of a family. Mother, father, first generation of children, second generation of children, and then the various dynamics that happen between those generations, depending on how much food can be mustered on a territory. Horses, camels, llamas, bison, across the North American land. At La Brea, down south, that ecosystem provided a lot of food for wolves. They formed large packs. Packs that could be the bane of American lions. We're going to compare them to, of course we're going to compare them to. This was a giant lion. Giant panther beast from the La Brea tar pits. And this was the dire wolf. The dire wolf. Made his way on the land with very, very big lions. <coughs> Dissuading competing carnivores off of their kills. If you were up against 40 of these, you would exercise caution. power of the pack would be upon you. It's very, very convincing. Who was the dire wolf in the context of recent findings?